Hi, this is Mr. Crawford. Uh, we're looking at video number three on soil, and this will be the final video for this week. Uh, once again, I want to point out that if you're having difficulty or that if you have questions, one of the best ways to get a hold of me is that email address. That's rcrawford at jcpsmail.org. And so if you need some help, you got to reach out to me. I won't know you're confused if you don't ask. And remember, there's no stupid question. All right, so much like last time, we're going to start out with a, with a bell ringer. I just want you to do some vocabulary word matching. You don't need to write these down. I just want you to pause the video and see if you can remember uh, which one of these terms belongs with which one of these vocabulary words. Uh, go ahead and pause the video and see how you do. So if we look at uh, term number one, litter, um, as I look down that list, I remember litter was the any organic material that was fresh and recognizable, and we find that at the soil surface. Sometimes that's called surface litter. Uh, term number two is humus, not to be confused with hummus. Uh, term number two, humus, that is, that is uh, litter that has been transformed by decomposition. So that best matches C, old, completely decayed, unrecognizable organic matter in the soil. And of course, number three, organic. Organic just describes any material that is living or was once living or was produced by something that is living. So those are three key words that I need you to make sure that you remember and that you use as we're going forward. So I want to go back to, I keep coming back to this pie chart and I want to look at it again today. So, uh, you know, our first video, we talked about weathering and parent rock and how rock is turned into smaller and smaller bits by this process of weathering. And it can become the minerals, the bits of minerals that we find in soil. Last week, we looked at this smaller percentage, which is organic matter. And we're going to, in an indirect way, be looking at that 50% that's left. Um, in, in all healthy soil, we're going to find air and water and quite a bit of it. Okay, so here we go. First thing that we need to that we need to start learning about and understanding is that soil texture is going to help us understand the water and the air that we find in soil. So soil texture is a measure of the amounts of different sized particles of rocks and minerals. Well, that's probably not very helpful, but I think with a little bit of a little bit of discussion, we'll be able to understand why we say soil texture is this measurement of the different size particles. So when we look at any soil sample, uh, we're going to find that we have three basic types of particles, and those particles are strictly uh, set apart by size. That's the only difference between them. Often it is the same bits of rock and mineral that have been weathered but they're of different sizes. And so when we look, we have sand, silt, and clay. Those are our three particle sizes. And when we look at sand, we find that that's gonna be the largest particle uh, that we will run into in a soil sample. Um, now, sand is easy to spot, literally. Um, it, is, it is big enough to be seen by the human eye. So if you're, looking at a, if you're looking at a particle in a soil sample and you can actually see it, that means that you're looking at sand. Now, the next size down is a smaller particle. It's, I'm going to call it the medium-sized particle. We call that silt. Now, silt can't be seen generally with uh, just your eye. Uh, we have to use a magnifying lens. We, our eyes need some help to be able to see silt because it's so much smaller. If we look at this diagram over on the left side, you can see how big that silt particle would be. If a sand particle were as big as that outer circle, that tan circle, then that smaller circle on the inside would be the relative size of a silt particle. So the last particle we want to look at is a particle called clay. Now, uh, this, you may have had, heard the soils we have here locally um, in Western North Carolina described as clay soils, and, and they are. And clay soils or clay, when we talk about clay, we're talking about those smallest particles. These particles are incredibly tiny. Uh, we can only even see clay particles with a microscope. And, and at that, even at that um, magnification, it's still really, really uh, almost too small to see. And, and if you look at our diagram, that clay particle there, that's probably still drawn much too big. So even if a piece of sand was as big as that, that huge outer circle, 
uh, I almost think that that clay particle would be almost indistinguishable. It would be almost invisible still at even this scale. So texture of a soil really depends on how much of each type of this, these particles that we have. So really all soils are some sort of mixture of these three different particle sizes, sand, silt, and clay. And so if we have a soil, if we have a soil sample, and we find that it's mostly made out of these large particles, it's pretty typical for us to say, oh, that's a sandy soil because it's mostly made out of sand. Now, if on the other hand, we have a soil that is mostly made out of these medium-sized particles of silt, then we might call that a silty soil. Um, the soils that we have here locally, uh, we call those clay soils because they're mostly made from these really small microscopic clay particles. Now, it's not a particle size, but oftentimes you'll hear gardeners and other people who are uh, very concerned with soil farmers, they'll talk about something called loamy soils. When we talk about loamy soils, what we're talking about is a soil that is pretty equally mixed. You would find that a loamy soil has equal amounts of sand, equal amounts of silt, and equal amounts of clay particles. Uh, loamy soils are usually great for growing plants, and we'll, we'll sort of understand that as we move forward. All right, so it's time for you to um, take a few minutes, and I want you to try this lab. Uh, you're gonna need to uh, pause the video, and I want you to go find that soil sample. I want you to take that soil sample, and I want you to look around for a container. It can be any container. It can be glass or plastic. It can be something that's from the kitchen. It could be something from the recycling bin. But I want you to take this, uh, this soil sample. You take your soil, and I want you to put it inside of your container. And after, make sure you've got all the clods uh, busted up. Make sure you don't put any roots or sticks. You know, make sure your soil sample's clean, the way we discussed when you took it. I want you to go ahead and put that in, in a jar. If you have a mason jar, those are absolutely the best. Uh, I want you to put some water in there and I just want you to leave a little room at the top. And then I want you to shake that jar. I want you to shake it for probably three or four minutes. I want you to make sure that you've broken up everything in the soil. And once you can see that you've done that, uh, you know, be, be careful by the way, if you are using glass and you're shaking it, um, it would, it's really, really easy for a glass to become slippery when it's wet. And so just make sure that you're shaking vigorously, uh, but you're also being careful. After you get done with all your shaking, I just want, this, I want you to set your jar aside. Um, and you're going to come back to this jar, and I want you to look and see what happens in the jar. Okay? Uh, and I want you to draw what you see, and try to draw it as accurately as you can and to the best of your ability. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, pause the video and I'm going to give you time to get your materials together and to work on this lab. All right, hopefully at this point you've got your jar uh, all set up and you've set it off to the side and you can observe that. Uh, I want you to observe it again in 24 hours uh, and, and wait a day and then you can wait two days and three days, but I want you to keep an eye on that jar. All right, so um, when we look at these different sized particles, uh, we're going to find that in between these particles, there's always empty space. Um, you know, it, imagine filling a jar with golf balls. Uh, you know, we might look at the jar and say, oh, you know, this jar is completely filled with golf balls. But if you really were to look at it, you would be at a spot that very clearly inside, uh, inside of that jar, there was still some empty space between those particles, which, we, which are our golf balls. And so we call those empty spaces. Uh, when it's in soil, we call those pores. And now, you know, really those pores, they're not really empty. Those pores are going to hold things like water. Uh, they're going to hold things like air. And remember, those are, air and water are two important components of every healthy soil. So now, when we think about, when we think about these pores, um, the particle size really matters. Um, so if we have a part, if we have a soil that's mostly made of large particles, and by that we're talking sand, um, you know, these large particles are going to have large pores between them. Uh, a soil that is mostly sandy with these large pores, we're going to find that it's going to allow uh, the water, whether from precipitation or from, you know, irrigation, it's going to allow the water to enter the soil really easily, and it's going to go in there fast. And so they're, you know, these, these soils, sandy soils with these large pores, they readily accept water. 
But the problem for them is, is they can't hold water. So sandy soil is often not great for uh, growing for growing crops or plants because uh, it cannot hold water. Now, if we look at the other side of the spectrum, let's suppose we have a soil that's made of really tiny particles. We're talking clay here. So we have these tiny open spaces between them. Uh, clay soils are notorious for um, not being able to absorb water very well. It takes a long time for, for water to infiltrate or to sort of soak into the soil. The water doesn't enter easily. But once a clay soil has water in it, uh, the clay soils tend to hold on to that water. They tend to trap it in these really small pores. It's, all, it's hard for it to get in. But it's also much harder for it to get out. Now, when we have soil, when we have soil that has water trapped in it, uh, of course, that's going to be soil that can be good for plants. Now, when we look, uh, really the best possible option is to have a uh, have some big spaces and have some tiny spaces. And so that's why we talked about loamy soils, which are a combination of all three particle sizes. That's why many gardeners really prefer loamy soils because you know they uh, they drain really well, so the plants don't drown. They let the water sort of uh, you know, come in and out, but they also tend to trap enough water to keep the plants healthy. So pores are those empty spaces. Those empty spaces really aren't empty. They are filled up with air and with water. And we know that both of those um, are really going to be very vital when we talk about plant surviving. Okay, so plant survival really depends on these pores and a, a good soil has, um, it has pores uh, that it can hold things, but it also, um, those pores are really various sizes. So one word that I want you to make note of is infiltration. Infiltration, when we talk about it, is really just how quickly water can enter the soil. So this is what we were, what I was speaking about a moment ago. We can see a clay, what clay soil there on the left in this image. The water isn't going to infiltrate very quickly or very deeply. It's mostly going to hang around there at the surface, which is really where plants mostly are going to need it anyhow. Now, uh, loamy soils, on the other hand, that's, that's a soil that's going to let that water in and notice how much more of it it's going to hold. And there's going to be more water available for the plant. Sandy soils, we can see that there's less water available for the plant. Uh, that, that just passes, that water passes right through those large pores and then it goes down so deep that it's very quickly out of reach for the plant. And here's our last bit for today. Uh, we're going to look at these things called horizons. Horizons is just a fancy word for soil layers. And so soil layers, we're going to have, at this point, you've probably been able to spot the surface litter. So when we go went and rake back our leaves with our soil sample, uh, that's, a, that's a good example of uh, surface litter. So it's all that fresh uh, and organic matter that's not yet decomposed. When we look underneath that, that surface litter, we're going to find a soil layer called topsoil. Topsoil is important. It is where most living things are found. It is where plant roots are. It is the, the, the really the layer of soil that supports plant growth, which is really important for us. So um, when we look in this topsoil, that's where we find that decayed matter, that humus. Um, topsoil is really the life uh, where, where we find all of our life in soil. When we move below that topsoil, our next horizon, our next soil layer, we're going to call that subsoil. When we get into subsoils, uh, we don't really find a lot of living things there. We might occasionally have animals burrow deeply and get into the subsoil, but really this is just going to be lots of minerals, lots of uh, weathered rock, um, and you know, you're not going to have any humus in there. Very few living things will be in our subsoil. And of course, as we discussed when we talked about Earth's crust, uh, when we get underneath this subsoil, we're going to get down to a layer of solid rock. We call that bedrock. Uh, you know, when we look at bedrock, we can often learn about the soil by seeing what kind of rock was weathered to make it. And uh, we, we also know that really at this point, we're to Earth's crust, that rocky, thin outer layer of soil. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think that'll be enough for one week. I hope that you've uh, hope you've managed to uh, learn some things about soil. We'll continue this adventure next week. Uh, remember, there won't be a video for Friday. Uh, Fridays are going to be a catch-up day for you. Once again, if you have questions, don't hesitate to email me. Have a great weekend. Take care.